Hello, and welcome to this video training series of the eManage Cloud VMS. Today, I will be doing an introduction on the Toucan software. Now, to get to the Toucan software, you need to log in to the Vending Zoo portal. So if you don't have credentials to the portal or don't know how to log in, you'll want to watch that intro tutorial on logging into the cloud software. Once you get logged into your portal, you'll have access to Toucan, and you just need to click it to open it up. So as I click that, I get a new tab that loads the Toucan software. And once it gets loaded, it looks like this. Now basically, all of the navigation that you are going to be doing inside of Toucan is done through the navigation panel here on the left. And over here on the right, you have your name. And if you click on your name, you'll get a list of options that we will also be going over shortly. So on the navigation panel, this is an accordion type navigation panel, meaning if I click on a section, it'll expand for me and show me the options under that section. If I click it again, it collapses. Let's go ahead and open up all of the sections. And in just a minute, I will briefly go over what each one is. But before we do that, let me explain that inside of Toucan, there are basically only three screens that you need to work with. There are list screens, edit screens, and report screens. So if you understand those three screens, you are a cloud master. All right, looking back at our navigation panel, we see that there are a lot of list things in here. And a list is one of the types of screens in the software. So let's talk about them first. All right, here at the top is our machine list. Now when we start our business, a lot of times we don't know what locations we're going to have yet, and we might not know all of the products that we're going to be using, but we do know what our machines are going to be. So that's why your machine list is here at the top. So I'm going to go ahead and click machine list, and that opens up a list screen. And this is what the list screens look like. They're kind of like a grid or a spreadsheet. And when you open your machine list, yours is going to be blank. You will not have any machines in here. So for that, you'll want to watch the video on adding machines. Let me go ahead and click on the product list because you will have data there. So I click on my product list and you also should have a list of products that's provided to you. That's sort of like a, a jump start to get you going. And this is a good place to explain some of the capabilities of the list window. So the list windows do not allow me to, to edit information or add information into my database. What they are for is searching and filtering and sorting that data. And I can also use them to export data. So let's kind of walk through an example. There are three parts to the list window. The first part is this top bar up here. This is the button bar where, uh, where I have specific buttons for this list. This section right here is the search bar. So the search bar has this group of four buttons. I have a search, a clear, an add, and a settings. My four buttons. And then I have the columns and a search area for each one of the columns. Then this section down here are the results of my list brings back my list. And next to each one of the items in my list, I have an edit and a delete button. All right. So let's start with here at the top. Next to my column name here, you'll notice I have this little up arrow. This is my sort icon, and it's pointing up. So it tells me that, it, that this column, product name, is being sorted ascendingly. So it shows up in alphabetical order. If I click the column name, now my sort changes and my arrow points down. Now it's sorting descending. If I click it again, my sort icon goes away. So that has turned the sort off. Now I can sort on any column and I can do it multiple times. So for example, let's say I want to sort by category and within category, I want to sort by the product name. So I'm going to start by sorting by category. So I'm going to click category and I get ascending. And that means that any product that does not have a category does show up at the top 
and it's blank. And then the products that have categories show up with the category sorted. So I want to reverse that. I'm going to click category again. Now it's sorting descending, but now all the products with categories come to the top. Now within each of those categories, I want to sort by product name. So I'm going to click product name now. And now I'm sorting by product name within the category. So for my category of non-carbonated, these products are sorted alphabetically. Then within my category of food, all those products are sorted alphabetically, and so on and so forth. If I click product name again to reverse that, now those products are still within their categories, but now they're sorted descending within that category. So my sort criteria, my sort options are unlimited as far as what I can do and what columns I can sort on. Let's go ahead and click that and turn the sort off on all of that. All right, now let's go into searching. Let's say, for example, that I want to create a list of products that I can give to a location. And the location has told me that they are allergic to apples. So I want to make sure that I get all the products that have the name Apple in, that, in their name. So here in my search criteria, I'm going to say, give me all of the products that have Apple. And it's important if I spell it right. Then I can use my filter button to actually list out how I want to search by that. So we're going to say it starts with Apple. Okay, so we'll start there and we'll use our search button to perform that search. Okay, so I get back a list of all the products that start with Apple. But that's really not what I wanted. I wanted a list of products that contained the word Apple. So let's go change our filter. So I want contains the word Apple. Let's resort that or research that. Okay, so now I get back a list of all the products that contain the word Apple, even if it's a compound word like pineapple. Great. Um, let's say that I, I want to narrow that list down a little bit more and I want to see all of the products that contain the word Apple but that are only in my food category because I'm not going to be taking any carbonated drinks to this location either. So just the food category and we'll perform that search. Okay, so you can kind of get the idea. You can put in as much search criteria as you want and you can perform filters on that search criteria and then pull that information back. Now really if we wanted to produce a list of products for a location and they've told us that they don't want to have apples in them, I don't want to give them a list like this. What I really want to do is give them a list that does not contain apple and I probably don't want to limit it to the food category. I probably want to make that for all the categories so I can blank out that food category by using that blank space at the top of that drop down. Now let's search this. Okay, so this is more like a list that I would want to give to the location so they could pick their products. But I don't want them to see all this other stuff that's showing up in my list. So next to each one of the column names is a little down pointing bracket. It doesn't matter which one of these I click on. I can click on any of them. And any of them will give me a list of columns that are on this list. And now I can uncheck the stuff that I don't want them to see. Okay, looking better. But I really want the product name and the calories to be together. So I'm going to click on calories and drag it over and put it next to my product name. Now I need to make this product name a little bit bigger too. So I can kind of format the list and make it look how I want. All right, this is more like it. I think I can give this list now to my location. So I need to create a document that I can give to the location. A couple of ways I can do that. I can export this to PDF or I can export it to Excel. Let's try the PDF. And let's call it no Apple products. And we'll save that. What happens when I save it is it creates the PDF and then downloads it. So now I can go here to my Chrome browser. I can say open. And there is the PDF that we generated. Now the PDF is basically just a screenshot or a screen print of my list window. 
which is okay, but let's try the Excel export and see what that looks like. So we'll export to Excel. No Apple products. Open this one. And we actually do get an Excel spreadsheet with the items that are in our list. But it's based on our filter and our searching, our searching and our sort criteria that we applied. So the list windows or the list screens allow me to do this sorting and filtering of my data, and then I can actually export that data out in Excel or PDF if I want to. So that's some of the capabilities of these list windows. Let's go ahead and put our columns back. Go ahead and add those back in. Okay, now um, our clear button right here lets us clear out really fast and conveniently any search criteria or filter criteria that we have put into our list. So if I click my clear button, that goes ahead and blanks out my search criteria and clears out my list. If I do a search and there's no search criteria, then the search brings everything back. So clicking search is now going to bring everything back, apples included. All right, so that's search and clear. Now our add button here is going to allow us to add items to our list. This add button and this add product button are essentially the same thing. You can use either one of them, it's just whichever one you feel more comfortable using. So I'll go ahead and click this add button here and that opens up an edit type window. So this is an example of an edit window that allows me to enter in information. So let's go ahead and put in a new product and we'll save this. Okay, so we saved it. If we go down here to the bottom of our list, there's our new product. Why is it down here at the bottom of our list and, and not in where it's supposed to be? Well, we don't have any sort criteria turned on with our product name. No sort icon. So it's not being sorted. So it just shows up in the order that we have entered them in. All right. Now we can use our edit button and we can actually make changes to it. So I'm going to call it A Todd's new product. Very creative. I will save this and scroll back down and there is our product. Now we really would like to see that at the top so I'm going to go ahead and turn sorting back on. And now there it is up at the top. Okay so that's how we can add new stuff to our list and just to show you if I click the add product button I get the same thing that I did when I clicked my add button in my group of four. Okay, so that's our edit button and our add button. The delete button, of course, removes that item from our list. So I'll go ahead and click delete. Delete that product, yes. And now it disappears from our list. All right, so those are an example of the list windows or list screens inside of Toucan and what you can do with them. Okay, now let's go through each one of these items that you have in your navigation panel. Machine list, as we saw, is going to be a list of all of your machines, active machines and inactive machines, just a list of all of those machines. Machine templates, these are templates that you can create that when you locate a machine, you can use the template to populate what the coils and products are for that machine. Service history. This is going to be a list that will show all of your service history as you go out and service those machines and if you have card readers in your machines as that data gets loaded from your card readers into Toucan that vend information will also show here in your history. There will be video training series on each one of these options so you can go and you'll be able to see a lot more detail. Product list, that one we've played around with, that's a list of all of your products. Location list, these will be all of the locations, active and inactive. Service history again, this service history is the same as this service history here. Working location list, this is a list of all of your locations 
that currently have machines located. So, kind of a way of filtering your locations to only show you the locations where you have machines located. You could have old locations where you have machines that you have taken out, but you leave the location in your system because there's revenue attached to that and you're not ready to delete it yet. So working locations just shows you the ones that are working. Product sold graph and machine inventory, these are part of the remote monitoring system that will let you actually remotely monitor your machine using the card data that's coming in from your card reader. And then as well, the e-data tools are specific tools for managing and working with that data that's coming from your card reader. Okay, so in a nutshell, that gives you some of the basic workings of the Toucan software. One of the last things that we want to cover is this area over here under your name. So if you hover your mouse over your name, you'll get a list of some additional options and preferences. The first one is changing theme. Okay, now this does allow you to change the colors and some of the icons in the Toucan software. So you can pick a different theme and Toucan will actually change and modify to fit that theme. Some of these themes are really awesome and some of them are quite ugly and I will let you decide which one is which. You may want to occasionally come in and just check the list of themes so that you can see new themes that will be added because the list will be changed from time to time and added to and we may include some things like some holiday themes and some other things to make it kind of fun so that you've got some options to change the look and feel of your software. Then there is a preferences section. This is a coming soon section that will actually allow you to have additional features to customize your software. Change password this will allow you to change your password. Simply enter in the current password that you currently have and then your new password and then confirm that new password and then change. So there are no requirements for length of password or password complexity and you are not required to change your password with any specific time interval. So how often you change your password and what kind of policies you want to apply are totally up to you. The last thing is the sign out. Now when you do sign out from either the Toucan application or the portal application, that deletes the encrypted cookie that the cloud uses with your browser. And then that, when that cookie is gone, you will be required to log in again with your credentials. So for example, if you were working on a tablet and somebody wanted to use that tablet and you were in your software and you you didn't want to close down your browser but you don't want them in your software you can just simply do sign out it won't matter how many tabs you have open of the software when you do sign out of one of them it signs you out of all of them so if I were to go over here to the portal even though I still see my stuff because the page has not refreshed if I were to click on one of these I'm going to be taken right to a login window or if this page gets refreshed it's going to take me right to a login window so signing out of one tab signs you out of all of the tabs thank you for watching and please continue watching the other video sessions in this training series and you'll be on your way to becoming a cloud master